Hello, boys and girls. What's going on? It's Tom. And it's Jamie. Welcome to the Chronicles of Podcast. The Chronicles of Bloodstock 2023. Hi, I am Mike from Ambrius. I'm Sam. Most morning, how are you doing? We're doing really well. We played on the Sophie stage earlier and we're still buzzing. It was, um, it was, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it, it's static. It's, it's a game changer, man. Like, we've wanted to play the Sophie stage for years. Yeah. Yeah, it happened. Yeah. <laughs> we're so happy about it. Like, Is it one of those moments where you're just like, really? Did we just, did that just happen? Is this it, real? It was, it, it was very quick. It, it was, blink and you miss it. It was kind of, but, there was a time that you get to have on stage and you think, we're playing the Sophie, Sophie stage at Bloodstock. It's, it's so nice, man. Yeah. Loved it. Absolutely incredible. I mean, how was you, have you been here the whole weekend or have you just got here today? I've or? been here since Thursday and the, the rest of the guys popped down yesterday. I think, like, they, like, to be fair to them, they wanted to sort of be refreshed and yeah. ready, whereas I was just like... I'm yeah. just going yeah, to slog it I'm going to get that I, I must admit when I was seeing all the Instagram stories of people at Blood Stock I was like oh I should be there I should be there but I, I just wanted one more night in bed to be refreshed for the set no it makes sense I mean obviously there's no temptation when you're at home either yeah, I was like should we have a beer should we have one let's uh, have four I'm maybe boring. seven I'm <laughs> boring mate I'm such a I'm not a rock star at all you'll be having some beers tonight though won't you yeah, I think I think I've been forced. Uh, <laughs> hey, no, no, you, there's well. no force in a bay. You said you were going to have some if it was a good day. A good yeah, I said, if it goes well, it's because I wasn't expecting it to go well. I, I thought I'd played my hand. <laughs> yeah. but it went well, so I, yeah, I think I'll be a dribbling mess at some point in the VIP. Ah, uh, well, I look forward to seeing that later. <laughs> um, so, compared to an Ambrose gig, then for festivals, do you change the playlist up or the setlist up a little bit? I, we don't just go banger after bangers. So people might not be so aware of you, or is it just much the same? Um, ever since the EP came out, we play it uh, from start to finish, including the um, intro tapes. So we have the intro tape, and there's parts in between the songs as well. And we, we literally, one, two, three, four, five, all, all the way through. That's great, it's, especially fans are listening to it, like, I know what song they're going to play next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we are looking forward to, because uh, we've got some new songs in the works, but we're just trying to make sure that they're perfect and ready to sort of like be added to the set list um, so we're going to mix it up I think and we probably we'll get it set up so we've got a few different sets that we can do because we've got a click and everything so you know depending on where we're playing we won't think oh we're going to do this set list or we might change it up and yeah. mix things up and I think it would be good for us as well because you get a little too complacent if you play the songs in the same order every time like, we need something to keep on keep us on our toes I think like, absolutely think we're, we're starting to play a few more shows now where we're kind of going up in the bill so it's, it's going to be nice having a bit of a longer set as well. It's, it's getting quite nice like that. Like, it was always sort of a half an hour set, isn't it, when you start out. Then as you start going up, it's like 40, 45 minutes. So I'm looking forward to doing a few more songs now. Yeah, that'd be amazing. So I don't know if you're aware, us as a podcast, we are ambassadors for the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. Yes. Obviously, you played on Sophie's stage today. I'm... I was going to ask if you're aware of Sophie and her story, but the way you just said yes, that makes me think the answer to that is yes. I remember hearing about, I think I was working, still working in in retail at the time, and it was always on a weekend, and you get, if I get five minutes, I usually had a look at the newspaper when no one was coming in. I remember reading about it and just horrified. It's it's something that shouldn't happen, like, and it, you know, regardless of who you are or where you're from, like, it it was a hate crime. It absolutely was. I, I find out because like, of the Beholder song that never never bring a stone never take a stone and it was all I think it was all about Sophie's story yeah it's brilliant but song it's horrible it's awful but obviously playing on that stage today and your familiarity with Sophie's story did that make that set just that little bit extra because you're on it that did. stage yeah. flying we, that flag so one of our songs is about um, you know the, it's called Red and, it, and the, the whole idea of it is about the fact that we all bleed red and we're yes. all one, so we should treat each other as so. And you know, so there should be hate crimes and prejudice and things like that. And before we played it today, we did say we dedicate this one to Sophie and Sylvia. Oh, and the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. That's amazing. That's because amazing. it's yeah, it, it's it's just fitting. And we there might even be people out there that still don't really know about it. So it's always good to sort of spread awareness. And 
you know, the sooner we can sort of make things like make awareness it's yeah just it just needs to be talked about absolutely and that stage is so important to doing that I was t- we were talking to Van yesterday I think it was Fury and I was saying you're putting it out there saying you're playing on the Sophie Lancaster stage some might go along they're like oh wicked they're playing on that who's Sophie Lancaster and then might do a Google search and then that message gets to someone else it does you know and it's so important that's why Bloodstock's amazing for doing that they've got so much focus on Sophie's story but what happened to Sophie the attack itself happened 16 years ago yesterday is that something you guys have ever had to endure in your life where you've been, I don't know, had something shouted at you? Hopefully not physical violence because of the way you dress, what you're listening to, where it might I've be. I've been assaulted quite a few times. I used to have hair, like real long hair. Unfortunately, the jeans don't allow me to have that anymore. I'm but, with you. I'm um, with you, brother, don't worry. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's together. Hats, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was coming oh, yeah. back from a firework display um, and I, I'm going to say it might have been one or two years after the, the, what happened to Sophie. And like it was me and two mates coming back from a firework display, going down like the only road it takes to get back to the town that we were staying in, and we got jumped by like 16 guys that were just stood in the road, and it was like there was no getting around them, and it, they just you know hurling abuse, and it, I tried to just walk around, but I'm not going to go into details, but it wasn't pleasant. So thankfully we got away with like a few cuts and bruises and stuff, but you know I've still got like a bit of lump in my lip from like where I got like headbutted and stuff like in the face, but but it's 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 I don't really. I don't mind talking about it because it's unfortunately a reality of this is why people need to know about it because it happens and it's not even just about you know uh, people from different cultures it could be people from you know like depending on where you're from around the world you know people make a big deal about like I don't know like, it's, it, people, it, prejudice is just so, in so many different ways isn't it yeah, what I'm trying to say like and yeah like and like, thankfully like the Sophie Lancaster Foundation isn't really just about like you know the difference between cultures it's about everyone like there's no room for, for prejudice regardless if that makes sense the common denominator that I found with these when we have these comments when Jamie asks his questions is it's always 18 guys 16 guys 20 people it's never you know it's not one it's always in a massive massive group and I find that's that's you know I mean call that they're just cowards basically in my opinion but literally every band I spoke to oh yeah I got jumped by 8 people 10 people 16 people 15 people and it's bullshit and it's stop sorry I'll just, just sorry I'll get off my soapbox now <laughs> no but you're, you're absolutely right and it was like that like um, you know that was on the one occasion the other few, the other few times it wasn't as many people but yeah it's, it's, just, it's just not right and it is an unfortunate reality of, of what we have to deal with yeah, absolutely. Sometimes, yeah. like from people from different cultures I, I don't get it as much nowadays because apparently now that I've got my head shaved I look like someone you wouldn't want to jump out on <laughs> like from an alleyway or anything like Amazing, that but it's, it's weird. It is, yeah. <laughs> well it's, it's still not right and it no. shouldn't happen so you know thankfully right anyway. like, but to do it for some, the way someone looks or the reason they listen to is stupid man yeah, like, it's disgusting it really is. Oh. I, I hope you don't mind me asking this but something that a, a survey that Sophie Lancaster Foundation did recently and it's something we're kind of focusing on at the moment did you report that incident to the police when it happened I did yeah and did they actually do anything about it um uh, not really I, I don't really know to be honest like after it happened I kind of tried to just forget about it I don't really remember hearing anything like very soon afterwards yeah. like I don't want to like trash the police because they've got like you know they deal with so much stuff and yeah. I've actually been burgled in the last month and like they were out within like within five minutes and they were really helpful so you know I don't it's, it's a weird one no, I'm, no. I'm not going to say like they're, they're selective of what they deal with but it's not going to be I can't imagine it's an easy job to do people above isn't it to make it a, it should be a hate crime we all know it's a hate crime anyway it absolutely we, should it should be we all know it's a hate crime and they, they need to make it. they need to make it official now they, yeah. it needs to be official they absolutely do and it's it's what we're working towards and hopefully we will get there eventually but moving it back on to you guys you've just played the Sophie stage last year you played the New Blood stage what was it like to get that call that email saying come on come back it was unreal it, it was absolutely unreal it's, we we never planned we, we not in our wildest dreams did we think it was going to happen but I had a message from Simon Hall yeah. in the morning saying have you got five minutes for a chat I was like 100% he <laughs> bit, gave him my number gave me a ring he said are you coming to Bloodstock Festival I said yeah we've got tickets 
we said, uh, how do you feel about playing? We thought, yeah, yeah, 100%, we'd be up for playing. And then he went to Sophie's stage. I went, yep. Fuck it up. <laughs> yep, 100%. I love it. I love it. Not I need to talk to the band members. Like, yes, we're doing it. All right. <laughs> yeah. I didn't finish his sentence. Like, yeah. The thing with Sam is, is why well, he does this thing where something really good comes along. He won't tell us exactly. He'll like. So on this instance, he put. Oh, no, no, like hi guys. How you doing today? It was band meeting at twelve p.m. And I was at work like, great, what's, what's gone on? Something's happened, something's gone wrong. So that, and, that, that happened with the new grad stage. Yeah, last so. year, he goes, oh, guys, I, um, I really need to talk to you. And again, I was at work, and I was just like, okay. And each o'clock. time he said what, what it was, I was like, no, you're not going to laugh. <laughs> we're not playing, but, 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 you know, but we were. So, yeah, he likes to sort of play it down and just spring it out. They called me a bit on it this year, though, because when we played the new blood, I said, right, band meeting, 12 o'clock. And they were like, I had messages from each one of them. Oh, is everything right? Is everything <laughs> right? And I said, oh, I'll, I'll talk about it later on the on the meeting, man. <laughs> Twelve o'clock came out. I'm like, oh, you guys are going to need to book these days off work because we're playing Bloodstock Festival on the New Blood. And then I tried it this year, and they all called bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> They're like fan meeting. They're like, oh, I'm in meetings all afternoon. You can have to tell me now. And I was like, you cheeky fucking mate. Like, yeah, we we playing with Sophie and everyone went mad. <laughs> Phenomenal, absolutely amazing. But it's been a year since Effigies of Time for you guys. What, what's the future looking like? Um, it's looking really good. We we got we got a couple of singles that we're going to release this year. Amazing. And then we're looking to do a big release next year. Phenomenal. Yeah, we we can't wait. We we're, we're working on it at the moment. And everything sounded like really tasty. You got some tasty riffs and more song ideas than we really know what to do with at this point. <laughs> I think it's more um, advanced as well. It's it's like yeah. evolved. Because I think with with like because Effigies of Time is a lockdown album, and yeah, even no. though we knew what we were planning to do before COVID happened, um, you know when it did sort of happen, it was like right, we've got some time technically we can use to just bounce the ideas across. Sam had like eight months of furlough or something like that. So we sent him over the ideas and he basically got Reaper and learned how to do everything. And the EP, as it sounds, is exactly what Sam put together. And it sounds amazing for something that we, well, I say we, Sam, like, it's, it's all Sam's work. I just play bass. I just work here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's face it. But yeah, like, we, we had a, we were able to make an opportunity out of something that was pretty grim let's face it like, yeah. let's hope that never happens again like, um, but yeah so this time around the songwriting is a little bit more together like we're doing it in a room things are you know it's, it's going to be slightly different I more of a live environment isn't it? yes yeah yeah definitely but the songs are sounding good and we can't wait to get them ready and put them on the set and add them to what we've already got phenomenal boys thank you so much for taking time to talk to us it means Thanks the absolute thank you very much for that. thank you very much thank you Sam hey, hey Stom hey, boys. <laughs> thanks so much man. thank you very much guys